My name is Shashi Gowda. I build UI tools for the Julia programming language. Uh, Julia is a really cool programming language. It's also easy to learn. Uh, so it's used by uh, scientists, mathematicians, and teachers to do sciencey things. So it's really good at numerical computing. It's also good at general purpose computing. So last summer, we started planning to make a UI framework uh, for the average Julia programmer. So the average Julia programmer doesn't want to spend time learning HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So we wanted this UI framework to be extremely painless. Uh, so no boilerplate code, no HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, just Julia. Also, no explicit DOM manipulation and AJAX web, web socket setup. Uh, so we also wanted this tool, toolkit to be uh, a powerful out of the box. So it has a rich set of library functions. And it's also modular. So if someone writes a visualization, you can just right away put it in your own UI, and it should all start to work. Okay. So to start explaining what this thing is, I'm going to start from the first principle. Uh, OK. So that's, that was actually showing you some old page. Anyway. OK. Let me get on with it. Uh, so the UI framework is called Canvas. Uh, so it's a convention in Julia to suffix everything with .jl. So you can access it over, I mean, you can find it on my GitHub page. Uh, so so what is a UI? So my claim is that a UI is just a function applied to some data. OK, so let me make this more concrete. So here's a hello world example. So I say plain text. Plain text is my UI function. Pass it some data, which is hello world. And I get that as the output, hello world. So here is a more involved example. I have some plain text over here. Uh, and I'm applying a 2EM uh, padding to it, and then coloring it with the tomato color. So here's the same thing, but with a steel blue color and a, but, uh, and a easier syntax. So I'm making plain text, passing it to pad 2EM, and then filling it with this color. Uh, so I can, so there are very uh, uh, good and predictable uh, layout primitives in this library. So you say vbox, box1, box2, you get, you get them aligned vertically, okay? Uh, so this is similar to tech or LaTeX if you have used it. Uh, so I can give uh, a spacing between the two boxes by just saying we skip 2EM. So it's going to give me a 2EM spacing here. So same thing uh, can be done horizontally. So I say hbox, box 1, uh, 2EM skip, and box 2. So I get this. Uh, I can also have uh, one, of, one of the uh, elements inside flexed out to fill the entire space. So in this case, uh, the blue thing is expanding to fill my uh, view box, OK? Uh, my, my containing div, OK? So OK, containing div is actually 30 EM. So that's, that's how it looks. So you can take these things you composed using vbox, hbox, and put them in more layouts, OK? So also, since you, uh, you are programming in Julia, and it's a powerful programming language, uh, you can do lay make layouts that you would uh, not bother doing in HTML, like this one. So this is a 15 iteration uh, a painting of, uh, so basically, each thing here over here is a div, and it's laid out in this way. So it's uh, filling, filling the remaining space inside a square, uh, half of the remaining spa uh, space inside a square, at each step. So, how do I close this? Okay. So, uh, layouts are not the only thing that you can do. You can do plots as well. So, here I'm saying plot, sign, and cost functions uh, from 0 to 6, and that's my plot to, to the right. Uh, here is a more involved plot. It's a random walk of 1,000 iterations. That's the plot. And here is a more involved example. So the icons are not up appearing here, but I don't know why. So I have a bunch of tabs here. So I, I'm passing it to this tabs function, which will return me this form of uh, uh, layout. And uh, I have this pages function here, to which I'm uh, 
uh, passing three different uh, UIs. So one is hello type, which is the first tab, PLT, PLT2, which are the plots. Okay. Uh, so this wire function uh, basically takes the tabs and the pages and connects them and returns a new set of tabs and pages, which you can then use in your actual layout. So here in the VBox, I'm using uh, T and P, uh, and it all starts to work. Okay. So how does this actually work, right? So you're uh, calling these functions and they're returning some values. And how does this actually work? So the way it works is uh, when you call a function like plain text, it creates uh, an abstract representation of what needs to be drawn. And after that, there is a render function which will convert it to a virtual DOM on the Julia side. A virtual DOM is just a representation of the actual DOM on the browser. And then this is uh, JSON serialized, sent to the sent to the client, and it's applied to the actual DOM. That's how you uh, see see these things. Okay. Damn it. Okay. So I'm going to open up. Uh, a demo here, so it's an examples vi demo dot jl um, edit anyway. So I am editing this file called demo dot jl, and my server is running in the same directory. So I am going to go to this URL uh, slash demo dot jl. So how you write? Uh, UIs in Canvas is there's you make a main function, and the return value of that function will be your UI. Okay, so forget this for now. This is just a function I want to use later. So here I'm saying plain text hello world. It's going to show me hello world. Okay, so now let us uh, put this in a V box. Uh, uh, and say box, I want it to be colored orange. OK. So I save this. Uh, it updates automatically. Uh, now I'm going to assign this to a value called x. And then I'm going to put this in a h box. Actually, this is where, so this is beta quality. And the patching actually does not work. Here, so I need to go and refresh this. So as you can see, it's uh, uh, I'm going to add a escape so that you can see that there are two different things over here. So I can increase this. And there is hot swapping, by the way. So when I change the, change the file, it automatically updates. So let me go back to my slideshow. Uh, that's how we code the UI. That's, that's all I wanted to show there. OK, so this is all well and good. You can create static pages and static UIs. So how do you do UIs that update over time, right? So what does it mean for a UI to update? It means that the data that the UI depends on changed. OK, so this is a simple model to think of. Uh, so here's, so let's start building a UI which updates something. So here's, uh, so what I want to do here is connect the slider to this plot. So when I move the slider, I want to set the phase of this sine curve using this uh, plot. So the slider over here uh, goes from 0 to 2 pi at steps of 0 0.1. So I can vary this, and the slider changes. Uh, he, this is an anonymous function. Uh, it's just calling sine x. Um, anyway, uh, so moving on. So notice that from the previous slide and this one, there are three things that changed. Uh, the first one being, I have this thing called input over here. Input is actually uh, a representation of the input to a UI. Uh, so I call it phase t. Um, 
And then I've moved this UI function into another function, fa uh, plot with phase, which takes uh, as argument the phase and plots with that phase. Okay, so if you see here, uh, I'm adding the phase to the sine curve. Uh, so in the, in the end, I am returning a plot with a phase of five by four. So as you can see, it's not at zero. It's starting at somewhere. It's starting at one by root two, actually. Um, so now we, uh, we haven't still connected the plot, right? So at the end of this previous slide, I said plot with phase pi by four, but I want to plot with the slider's value. I mean, plot, plot with the phase that is given by the slider. So now I have this input, which is updating as I move my slider. Uh, what I do is there's one piece to this puzzle. I say lift, take this function and this signal, phase t signal, and create me a signal of UIs. So what happens now is when I move this, the slider, the plot actually changes. Okay, this is all the code that was required to do this. Uh, so what lift does is it takes one, one signal and transforms it into another signal. In this case, it's a signal of UIs. Okay, so Canvas can actually draw signal of UIs. So how does this work? So, you, so I told you that uh, it generates virtual DOM and then uh, sends, it to the bro uh, sends it to the browser where it's actually applied to the actual DOM. Uh, so how does this work? So one way to make this work is just uh, create a new DOM, send it to the browser. The browser redraws the entire thing. But this will, uh, this is first of all inefficient. You have to transfer more data and do more things in the DOM. So this is not very good. So what we can do is we can, we can calculate a set of patches which can take me from my current UI to the next one. Uh, Canvas actually does this. There's a diff function inside Canvas which will uh, create a, a sequence of patches. These patches are then uh, serialized to JSON and sent over to the uh, client side where it is applied to the actual DOM. Uh, it is resulting in uh, a, a stepping in the actual UI. Okay, so this is the diagram. So there are these dotted lines which are going outside the screen and coming back all the way to the server where I have a lift call uh, and it generates a new, new virtual DOM. This, this is the previous virtual DOM. It takes a diff. So it's basically uh, calculating what changed exactly, and then sends the patches to the browser, and patches are applied over there. So I, the, the title of the talk is UIs as values, right? Uh, so what do I mean by values, right? So by values, I mean immutable values. Uh, I like the word values because uh, it does not uh, bring in the same uh, mindset as uh, when I say objects, right? So these values are more similar to numbers than to DOM objects. So for example, if you say hbox a comma b, you're getting a new, uh, new, new value, new UI value, uh, and a and b do not change, which is just, as, just similar to one plus two, uh, which will result in a new number, and one and two don't change. It does not mean anything for uh, one and two to change. But in an actual JavaScript, uh, uh, while you're writing JavaScript, you cannot be sure that A and B will not get modified by the hbox function. And uh, when you use A and B later on in your code, there'll be, uh, there can be unpredictable uh, business going on there. So, so this is the credit, sli credit slide. Uh, the signal framework I told you about that is inspired by Elm. Uh, so Ivan Zapleski, author of Elm, helped, helped me out a lot uh, with that. And, uh, so I'm also using Mattest's virtual DOM. It's a library in uh, pure JavaScript for doing virtual DOM stuff. Uh, so actually, patchwork.jl, the thing that uh, canvas.jl uses for virtual DOM, is a verbatim translation of virtual DOM to J uh, Julia. Okay. So, and also Viral Shah, Alan Needleman, and MIT for uh, supporting me through this work. Uh, thank you. Okay, questions. Okay, Brett picked the quotes. <laughs> okay, uh, there is this really cool essay uh, by uh, Brett Victor called uh, Magic Inc. I think all UI developers should read it. And he uh, tells how CSS, which is the basic thing that bread and butter of all designers, is a terribly designed tool. And uh, in Canvas, basically, we try to abstract out all of the nonsense of CSS and keep predictability. 
uh, for example, there is no margins in Canvas. There's only padding. So if you want to do margins, you create a, so you pad it, and it basically uh, puts a container around it and does the margin. Why not margins? Because margins have special meanings at different places. So when you say margin auto in a flex box, it's going to go to the end. Uh, there are collapsible margins and stuff like that, but we want predictability. Like, uh, yeah, that's why. Okay, thank you. Questions? Yeah. Hi. Hi. Yeah. I recently came. Thank you. I recently came across a, a UI framework uh, called Shiny. It was based on R. Okay. I was still in the initial phase. I'm just evaluating it. Okay. This framework looks very similar to that. I mean, so. Okay. Is it mean? Shall I start with this or that? I mean, I just got confused. I have no idea. This is uh, still beta quality. I Basically, both both language supports mean like uh, uh, okay, data yeah. visualization and, and yeah. analytics. So I would say uh, it's better to wait a couple of weeks and then just use this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Okay, I have a question here. Sure. So just to draw a comparison. Yeah. This is like React, but all on the server side. Yeah, I could say so, but uh, I mean, much better. I haven't written a React app in my life, okay? But uh, I could. So I think the signal stuff is, uh, I don't know, easier to think about. Okay, and one last question: yeah. so plots that you displayed yeah. are they drawn using Gatfly or? Yeah, they're, they're drawn using Gatfly. Sorry. Okay. So Gatfly is a plotting package in Julia. It's uh, very feature rich. So it it uh, it has different backends. Uh, one is SVG, PNG, and PDF, and this one is actually the patchwork backend, which is converting the plots into virtual DOM. Since this is an SVG, you can do that. Okay, so SVG is actually just DOM. So also, when I do this, I wanted to uh, show you this as well. So when I change the slider, what's getting transmitted is just the path. Okay, because it can diff and tell. Only the path in the plot changed. So I could probably show you this, but uh, it'll take some time. Uh, I need to reload. Uh, any other questions? OK. Do you have a last question for Shashi? OK, thank you very much, Shashi. Okay.